my side and uh, welcome to this webinar. Um, Sanjay, can you please uh, allow me to share my screen? Then I can share the PowerPoint presentation. Thank yeah. you. So there we go. Okay, so uh, today's webinar is um, split into two um, two parts. Um, first of all, we have a little introduction um, and a, a short presentation to show you the theoretical background and uh, to show you the setup uh, using a PowerPoint presentation. And in the second part, I will uh, do a live demonstration here from our laboratory uh, using our little demo transformer. Um, so thank you all for joining in and I hope you will enjoy the session. So um, my name is uh, Stefan Seibel. I'm from Germany. Um, I am service engineer at Power Diagnostics Service uh, and I do on-site measurements on power transformers, high voltage cables, uh, GIS and rotating machines. Um, so uh, the presentation is split into the following chapters. First, we do a little introduction. Then I will show you the root causes of partial discharges. Uh, I will give an introduction on the acoustic detection method. Um, I will show you the technical implementation, uh, which shows our solution to uh, acoustic PD uh, fault location on transformers. And then afterwards, I will give a live demo on this false location. Um, some of you who may have been in the uh, last webinar um, may have seen a few of the slides. So I will go quickly through the first slides and then uh, I will be a bit more into detail on the um, slides that are focused on the acoustic fault location. So uh, first of all, as we all know, transformers are very complex structures of mixed materials and components. Um, so especially when a transformer is newly manufactured, there are extensive factory acceptance test requirements. And uh, even after the transformer is in service, there are often PD monitoring systems or DGA monitored, monitors installed on site to assess the condition of the device. If a PD activity is detected during factory acceptance test or uh, while in service on site, um, the knowledge of the exact fault location is very helpful um, for further uh, planning um, of what to do um, because uh, you don't need a long visual inspection required um, because uh, some defects may not be visible at all. Uh, so you can reduce the repair time and uh, sometimes repair are, repairs are even possible on site. Um, so the root causes of partial discharges in transformers are uh, usually related to inferior quality of the insulation materials or fundamental design related problems. Sometimes there's an incomplete or Im improper processing um, sometimes there are uh, problems related to assembly. Uh, a very common problem is humidity and oil or the aging of the paper insulation. And that can lead to the catastrophic events that we see in these photos here, um, which might require repair or uh, even um, replacement of parts. Um, the impact of partial discharges on transformer insulation systems, including its components, which means the bushings, the tap changes, and so on, uh, is depending on the severity of the nature of the PD and the location on the main tank. Um, usually we have accelerated degradation of the insulation materials. Um, due to strong activity, there will be gassing, which cause subsequent deterioration mechanisms. Um, we have overheating due to hot spots uh, with high energy PD weakening the whole system. Uh, in general, there is a reduced life expectancy of the transformer and the worst case scenario is always an unexpected breakdown. Um, so, 
Ah, done. Sorry. Um, okay. So let's let's go to the acoustic detection method. So um, I can just skip this slide. Well, the the acoustic uh, detection method is a non-electrical method, um, which is uh, not related to the standard, but it is a very, very useful tool um, in order to identify uh, the, the source of the PD and the location of the PD. So uh, during the factory acceptance test, uh, acoustic measure, measure, measurements are not um, required, but as soon as we know that the transformer has a problem, that there is PD, um, this is a very good tool to identify a location. Um, so we know that partial discharge is a breakdown of a small area of the overall insulation and each PD pulse generates a different measurable electrical signal. So we have the local displacement current pulse, which can be measured on the test tabs. We have electromagnetic pulses, which can be detected using UHF method. And then there's the acoustic pulse, which travels through the um, the uh, oil and at some point will hit the tank wall. And that's where we start with the triangulation. Um, so there are different methods that I wanted to show you. First of all, we have the so-called textbook triangulation. So in theory, we have a PD source, which is represented by the small red dot here in the box. The box is our transformer. We put three acoustic sensors around the, uh, the, the tank of the transformer. And uh, in theory, by using the, the equation shown below, uh, we can calculate the exact position. But unfortunately, real life transformers are not that simple. Um, the interior is not homogeneous. We don't have a uniform transmission speed because there are different components inside that might block um, the, uh, the acoustic signal. Sometimes um, acoustic signals are transmitted via um, components inside uh, which hampers the detection and the tank wall itself is not a thin membrane, but uh, is, it's also an additional transmission path and it also reflects the signal. So the approach um, that we at Power Diagnostics um, uh, do is we reduce the complexity during the fault location by solving two flat, flat problems. First of all, we do a horizontal detection um, and then afterwards we do a second detection using a vertical arrangement of the sensors um, and thereby uh, we get pretty good results. So, um, the, the idea is to use the time delay, delays in the transmission of the signals. First of all, we need the electric trigger signal, uh, which is acquired immediately after the PD event happened. So, um, by using the bushing test tabs or an HFCT, we can get an electric signal, which we have seen before in the measurement, uh, and use this as a trigger signal for, uh, for the fault location. Um, the acoustic signal is delayed by the speed of sound and the length of the transmission path. So uh, the acoustic signal will arrive a certain time difference later and by you knowing the exact position of the three sensors, we can do a triangulation um, by using our software, which automatically calculates the time difference between the electric signal and the three acoustic sensors. And by calculating from the sensor position, um, it will calculate the fault position. So 
let me show you the technical implementation on how we do it. Um, we will use the uh, ICM system, which is our advanced state-of-the-art PD and loss factor measurement and analysis tool. Uh, it uh, has a high-end signal pre- and post-processing. Uh, it's capable of simultaneously uh, acquire in real time up to 10 input channels. Um, and it has the integrated acoustic PD location functions, which I will show you. It can also uh, do measurements under AC and DC voltages, and it includes an oscilloscope and optionally a spectrum analyzer. Um, the software you may have seen in the last demo, we have three different display modes. First of all, I show you the single channel panel, which is optimized. Uh, has optimized settings for a HV lab or in-depth research in case of a failure. Then there's the multi-channel panel, which can compare different uh, PRPDs recorded on the uh, on all of the channels. And uh, last but not least, we have the acceptance test panel, which is a dedicated mode for transformer factory acceptance testing, which I have also shown you in the last webinar. Um, in the single channel panel, we have 12 different display views with sub views, and these views are used for in-depth research on transformers. Um, so this here is the scope view. Then we have the map view, which shows the, P the PRPD pattern acquired over time. Then we have the spectrum view, which shows uh, the frequency spectrum of the PD pulses, um, as well as uh, detection of PRPD patterns at different frequencies. Um, and then we have the oscilloscope view, which is very handy for acoustic PD fault location. And we will also see this later on in the live demo. For fault locations with the ICM system, we use the uh, acoustic sensors type AS75, which is a piezo electric sensor with a phantom power supply. So it's an active sensor. Um, during the measurement, only the pre amplifier has to be changed. So we need an RPA1 D or G instead of a normal RPA1, which is used for uh, the, the normal RPA1 is used for, uh, for example, if you want to do. Um, factory acceptance test and uh, RPA 1D or G gives out a supply voltage for an acoustic sensor. Um, for the fault location, there's a dedicated uh, location software available. So we have here the scope view of the ICM system and then we have the so-called ICM acoustic software which can then um, combine the um, the uh, the oscilloscope view and calculate the uh, current fault position. Um, and then uh, you can enter a model of your transformer into the ICM acoustic software and it will automatically show you the exact location of the PD fault uh, that has been detected. So let me show you the setup for the live demo. Um, it's basically the exact same setup that we used in the last um, demonstration. So we are doing an applied voltage test, which means all the HV windings are on the same pot potential. Um, we have coupling capacitors on the HV side, um, which will not be used this time. Um, we have an LV winding, which is shorted and grounding. And on the ground cable, we have the high frequency current transformer. Um, in the last demo, we have seen on the high frequency current transformer that we get a very good signal on this um, decoupling unit. And uh, therefore I will use this as a trigger signal in the today's demo. Um, on the rear side, I have put some acoustic sensors of the type AS75I with some pre-amplifiers. Um, in the photo shown here, we have the horizontal arrangement of the sensors. 
which are mounted with magnetic sensor fixtures. Uh, I will also show this uh, later on using our lab camera. And um, we need to use the lower left corner as a reference point. Um, and then you need to enter the exact location of your three acoustic sensors uh, into the software, which I will show you in a few minutes. So the agenda for the demonstration, well, last time we did the calibration of all phases. We did a sensitivity check on the HFCT and we did a standard FET measurement. Today we will do an acoustic PD fault location. So we will identify a suitable electric trigger signal. We do a horizontal location, we do a vertical location, and then we verify the position using the software. Um, so now I need to change the screen. Um, one second, I will stop sharing this screen. And now I need to start sharing the other screen. which is this one, perfect. Okay, so uh, you can now see the ICM system software. Um, first of all, we see here, this here is uh, the single channel panel. Uh, I can now switch to the multi-channel panel. And uh, this is still the data from the last uh, measurements. So uh, we have here the signals that were detected on the uh, HFCT. We have here the signals that were detected on 1U, 1V, and 1W. Um, we can still see here this here is some activity that was caused by a tip on the high voltage potential. So this is some corona activity. We can see here on 1W a clear signal of um, internal PD and the strongest signal we received here on uh, the HFCT, which is the reason why I want to use this one as uh, the trigger signal. And if we switch further to uh, the AT panel, this is also from last demo. Um, we can see here the, the voltage curve and the different PD activities. Um, so today I will just focus on the single channel panel and then the um, the uh, the location with the oscilloscope. So um, maybe we start with. Uh, with the setup, um, one second, let me grab the camera. Oh, that's the wrong camera. Um, okay, one second. Ah, we will just, uh, well, you will see the uh, the other camera uh, on your screen, right? Yeah. Then uh, maybe I stop my video, and then the camera should work. Yes. So there we go. Um, so I will now show you the the setup. Uh, of the acoustic sensors. So we have here one, two, and three acoustic sensors. Um, what we need to know is we need a reference point, which you can freely select in your software. Um, 
then we need to know the, the distance from the reference point to the vertical arrangement. So today we start with the vertical measurement um, and then we need the position in relation to the uh, lower reference line. So um, this, this and this height. Um, and then uh, we can start with the electrical measurement um, and identify the position in horizontal direction. Then later on, we will move the sensors and do it in a horizontal arrangement. So um, let's get started with this part. First of all, well, this uh, this here is the uh, ICM acoustic software. So I've uh, started a new measurement. I already edited in the um, exact position of the sensors that we will be using or that we are currently using and that we will be using after the rearrangement of the sensors. Um, for a further analysis, I created a model of this transformer and uh, the 3D model arrangement here. And uh, we will later see the positions of the acoustic sensors uh, once the measurement is done and then it will show the exact location. So uh, let's go back to the ICM system software. Um, need to connect the ICM system. One second. Switch this off on again. There we go. So um, currently there's no voltage applied, so we don't get any signals. I'm just recording an empty pattern here. And um, now I will switch on the voltage. And I will now raise the voltage to a certain value where I know that there is PD. So you can see here in in this um, in this window that uh, the voltage is now five five point eight kilovolts. And I know that when we go to somewhere thirteen fourteen kV, you can see in the in the window below that there is some PD. So let's have a look here. Okay. There is PD activity going on. Very good. So now um, what we need to do is we need to go uh, to the location panel. Uh, the the I meant the, the oscilloscope panel. Um, I have the acoustic sensors connected to uh, one thing. I have the acoustic sensors connected to channel two, channel three, and so on. Uh, of course, we need to go to the setup O for oscilloscope. And as soon as, what's going on? Ah, there we go. We need to have the channel selected, obviously. Ah. 
Ah, um, there is there's a little bug here because I have a second screen connected. Uh, it's not working as intended. Sorry about that. One second, I need to restart this software break. Terminate. There we go. Okay. Yeah, there's there's a, a bug with CVI. Um and sometimes if you have uh, a second screen connected, uh, it will not work as intended um, because of the scaling issues with Windows 10. So this is uh, a problem that uh, we unfortunately have no control over to fix. Um, so it's it's important to have the software always running in the main screen, which I did not have uh, because uh, I had the second screen connected. But anyways, so back to the acoustic fault location. So um, we can see here in black is the electric trigger signal, which is um, which is uh, coming from uh, the HFCT. And then we have in red, yellow, and green um, the three signals from top to bottom from the uh, from the three sensors. Um, we can put the cursors here. We can move these cursors here to uh, the beginning of the signals. And um, as soon as we have them in a in a good position then we can hit the triangulation vertical button here and it will automatically copy this screenshot to the ICM acoustic software to the correct position um, in the uh, in the detection um, position and here we can see we have a very good matching of the three lines. So uh, the cursors are already in a, in a very good position. And uh, this here is the first position um, that we have for the acoustic fault. So uh, we get a position in X, Y, and Z. Um, and we need to verify this position of the vertical detection by doing the same step in a horizontal way. Uh, so how do we do that? Of course, uh, we need to, to rearrange the sensors. Um, therefore, I am now switching off the voltage and then uh, I will enter the high voltage chamber and uh, we will rearrange the acoustic sensors. So first of all, Rounding is important. So, can someone tell me something? Then, as as you can see, the sensors are magnetic, magnetically fixed. Uh, we have a so-called ultrasound coupling paste, which improves the acoustic coupling between the sensors, which look like this and the tank wall. Um, so this here is the magnetic sensor fixture. You can fit this right in. Then you put a tiny bit of acoustic gel on it. And then you mount it to the position um, where you uh, want to detect the PD. Um, of course, you need to know um, what is inside the transformer tank so that you can find the correct position 
for a PD fault location. So uh, sometimes these transformers have like wall shunts or any blocking structures inside, uh, which will also block the acoustic path uh, during the detection. So it can be quite tricky to find a good position uh, for mounting sensors. And it might take a few iterations until you get a very clear signal path. And on this transformer here, you can see we have uh, some cooling fins here, um, which are filled with oil. And these are transmitting the acoustic signals from inside. And uh, of, of course, you can only arrange the acoustic sensors here in positions where you know that uh, the signals will uh, eventually exit these slots. So putting the sensors here um, will not get you a signal, but you need to put them here where you get a clear signal. All right, so let's do um, the horizontal detection. So now it's it's basically the same detection as we did before. Um, let's go back to the ICM system software. Um, currently, there's no voltage applied. So maybe I'll go back to the map view so we can see here on channel one. Then start recording a pattern. Um, I'm now raising the voltage. Here we have sync. And here we have PD. Perfect. And now Now we go to the um, to the uh, oscilloscope view. Um, then we need to put the cursors here on the first pulses, like this. Maybe if I increase this a little bit, so averaging is good. So uh, that's okay. Now we are in horizontal arrangement. So we hit the triangulation horizontal button. We go back to the ICM acoustic software. And here we have the triangulation point for the horizontal triangulation. Um, And uh, this here is more or less by just a few centimeters off uh, for the uh, triangulation uh, compared to the vertical uh, triangulation. So this is already a very good uh, measurement. And if we go to the analysis, I wanted to show you this. So we enter the measurement and the sensor positions, and you can see here, uh, these dots represent the uh, three measurement points where we uh, have the, um, the sensors mounted, and the big red dot here is the area where we are expecting the, uh, where we expect the fault to be. So this red dot here is the location, which is basically the result of today's uh, measurement. Um, 
and if if I now want to uh, repair the transformer, I know where to look for the fault. Okay, so that's um, for the live demo. Was a bit quicker than expected, but nevertheless, um, I think you have seen a, a very interesting part of my life and what I do on site and also what we can do with our instruments and uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this webinar and I will hand over to Sanjay now. Sanjay, we yeah. Can... <coughs> yeah, hi. Yeah, hi, Oh, and is Zafar or Mohammed? Are you there? Hello, uh, Zafar Mohammed. Do you hear me? Yeah, moment. Yeah. I hear you now. Okay, Sanjay. Uh, uh, read the question if anybody has questions. So we will wait two minutes for a uh, participant to raise their questions in the chat window. In the Q and A session. So, Stefan, you want to present anything else? No. <laughs> okay. We uh, we basically saw the the most important part, and uh, so that's all I prepared for today. So um, I think uh, it seems there is no much questions. It's either, uh, I think, uh, uh, Stefan, you did so, so much fantastic job that nobody has questions, probably. Well, hopefully. <laughs> Okay, in that case, uh, thank you very much, uh, Stefan. That was really fantastic. Uh, and uh, by the way, this uh, webinar will be available as recording for who participated today. I'd like to review it. And also for uh, people who couldn't attend and would like to see it later. Um, as always, please uh, look at our website uh as well for all of the webinars um thank you everybody for uh, attending this webinar and have a good day and thank you stefan for ah, there's there was there was one question can we do this test online um so yes uh, it is possible to do this test online um if the transformer has Clearly, a PD which which can be somehow decoupled. Um, so uh, you need to find a way to uh, to obtain an electric signal by either using a UHF probe, which you can insert into one of the drain valves, um, or by putting an uh, HFCT around the neutral, uh, or by putting uh, decoupling units. Um, on uh, on uh, the bushing test tabs, uh, and then switch the transformer back online afterwards. Uh, so this this is possible, and then you can start putting the sensors around um, the transformer tank. So 
but it is uh, a lot more con convenient to do it offline with a mobile HV source, but that's not always possible. Um, so, yeah, it is possible, but it is not easy. Let's say it this way. Uh, Mohammed? Okay. I think there's one more question. How often do you recommend to that test? Uh, I only recommend to do this test uh, as soon as you have a P default and you want to know the exact location. Um, this is a non-standard test and it's only for diagnostic purposes. So uh, doing an, an acoustic test on a transformer uh, sometimes can also lead to false uh, interpretation results. So if you only put an acoustic sensor on the tank wall, uh, you might also just detect vibrations. So you think, okay, this is uh, PD, but it's only a vibration. So uh, it is strongly recommended to always have an electric signal first and then uh, find an acoustic signal and then match these two signals together so that you know, okay, this electric signal that I received is related to the or the this acoustic signal that I received is related to an electric signal, and uh, thereby you can correlate these together and know okay this is in fact partial discharge and not uh, an acoustic uh, vibration or whatever. Um, yeah, so uh, this this is a non-standard test that I only recommend to do for uh, further diagnostic investigations yeah thank you um we have uh, one question if we have any hv source so we can use icm system to measure pd on an empirical motor yes, yes it is definitely possible the icm system is a very versatile instrument and you can use it for basically any pd uh, measurement tasks, uh, be it transformers, rotating machines, cables, or GIS. Um, so depending on the accessories that you connect to the ICM system, uh, you can adapt it to any task for PD detection that you uh, are interested in. We have also several people mentioning I'm uh, thanking you for this uh, valuable information, uh, saying that this is very nice presentation. Four or five people, customers saying this. So, I do want to much. Thank, thank you. That was excellent. Um, as always, um, if anybody, uh, one more question. Uh, can we say this test is mainly done by the diagnostics lab, not field maintenance team? Uh, I wouldn't say that um, by field maintenance team. Um, well, it, it depends on uh, what what you refer to as field maintenance team. Um, but we also do these tests on site um, here at Power Diagnostics. We have a big truck which we use for offline PD testing on on site, and uh, we often uh, offer this. Acoustic fault locations also on big power transformers on site um, by using our H mobile HV source. And we also do this test uh, doing online measurements of power transformers um, in case we know that there is a PD fault inside. Um, so uh, it, it can be done on site and uh, also in the factory. Um, well, as as I said, it's it's crucial to know the exact location of the PD fault, and sometimes repairs can be done on site, and that's what uh, where we help to find the source and help the the supplier to make a decision whether this transformer has to be moved back to the factory or if they want to uh, give it a try and repair the transformer on site so they can save the transportation costs. Thank you. I'd like to make additional comment that uh, this webinar is second webinar 
following series of uh, webinar on partial discharge. Last webinar done also by uh, Stefan Seibel talked about different methods, uh, mainly uh, various sensors on partial discharge, uh, electrical sensors, mainly using HFCT and coupling capacitor, and uh, as well uh, demonstrated how to use those and also uh, methods on how to approximately find out which phase the fault is uh, by using the um, different sensors. And now with the, uh, once approximate location has been found out using various methods, we, we have PRPD pattern on each phase. Um, then the further uh, more accurate location can be enhanced and found using acoustic. So this is uh, additional step uh, once um, uh, main, maintenance team or, or, or uh, a team who would like to know more about the specific fault, probably to know more about it uh, before opening the transformer or to decide what to do. So this is uh, additional step. So um, it, it's often that customers uh, look at this method as uh, very difficult to use. So that's what uh, we done this uh, live demo practical webinar to show that how it's being done and it's not actually that difficult. Um, so we have also another question. What is the mini maximum rating of transformer that got to be diagnostics, MVA, KV? In terms of MVA rating and KV, what's the maximum rating of transformer that got to be diagnostics? This, this question we have. Stefan. Um, there is no limit. <laughs> exactly. So this, this transformer here is a very small transformer, but basically just because uh, we wanted to have a small one to fit into our lab. Um, but there is no limit. Uh, we have tested phase shifter with more than a thousand MVAs. Uh, we have tested 400 kV transformers, and uh, I think we can go even beyond this. Um, so don't don't get any limits. Uh, we we do all of them. Exactly. Um, okay, so I think uh, that would be good uh, so far. Um, no more questions. So, any additional comments uh, would like to make before we end this webinar, Stefan? I I thank you all for your participation, and uh, hopefully you've learned something and you found this webinar interesting. So, uh, join in next time. Um, next time, I think we will do a measurement on the GIS. Uh, and uh, stay safe, stay healthy. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a good day. Thank you. And moment, uh, can you end the webinar? Since you're the host.